Good day to you giant growers. This is Chris Brown, Garden of Giants YouTube channel, and today is the summer solstice. Yes, the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere. In fact, 9.57 a.m. is when we hit it um, here in the central time zone of the United States of America. And going to enjoy this nice long day. It's going to be a very hot day. It's supposed to be 92 degrees here. But that just means we're uh, cranking out uh, plants and fruit and getting everything set up for a nice long summer here. So happy summer to everybody. To the folks in the Southern Hemisphere, happy winter. Yeah, yep, it's your first day of winter and your shortest day of the year. So the thing you have to look forward to is every day is going to get longer. As for us in the Northern Hem Hemisphere, every day from here on out is going to get shorter until we hit our winter solstice. But anyways, my goal, um, as you'll see, is I wanted all the pumpkins pollinated. I really wanted them by June 15th, but uh, today is the day that every plant needs to have a pumpkin pollinated by. And as we go through the plants here, I think I came close to succeeding. But we will uh, we will jump into it and we will see what we got. All right, as usual, the 1109 Jutris. Let's start at my only competition squash. And if we look down the center here. You can see this plant is getting quite big, quite large. Yes, it is stretching to almost from the crown out almost 15 feet. That's going to be eliminated in the next day or two. And then same on this side. Now you guys remember from the past videos, I had some holes here and here. They are filling in. You can see they're coming back. They're, uh, they will be filled in shortly. And this plant really overall is just doing amazing. Um, as you can see, my first pollination of the year on the summer solstice. So I'm hoping that one takes. It is about 21, 22 feet out and probably about 30 to 40. 40 35 36 secondaries there's a lot of a lot of plant behind this so if it takes i'm not even worried about there not being enough plant um, in fact i'm more worried that if it doesn't take because it is going to be 92 degrees today that i'm gonna there's not a a uh, another squash in the tip so I'm going to have to then start doing a, one of these secondaries and, and a place I really don't want to go. So fingers crossed that that one takes. All right, over to Ruby. Oh, that little tendril still holding on tight. Uh, Ruby is, it's really starting to come along. I, I ended up, uh, this section here, those were so, um, they just were not growing. So I just chopped them. Um, what I think I'm going to do is use a secondary or sorry a tertiary off this one and just bring it out a foot or two fill it in that's the way now i i i'm not going to do it off this side i'd rather do it off this side because it's closer to the fruit so um in this situation i want the tertiaries coming from this way because of the closeness to the fruit and speaking of the fruit we got <coughs> We have one that is 10 days old today. However, um, I'm a little worried about it. And let's, let's pull this off and show you why. It still looks shiny, but if you guys can see, got a couple of these like weird patches that are oozing. Um, not sure what that is. But it started a couple days ago when this heat came in. So we'll see. It could be very early signs of aborting. Um, but I'll tell you this. If it continues, I'm going to chop it because I'm not going to deal with a fruit that's um, dripping and leaking all year. That's just sounds like a headache. But the reason why I got number two um, pollinated um about four days after so this one's about six days old 
and we're going to even go further and we're going to do one more there if you can see right in the tip i'm going to have two backups because i'm really worried about that one but overall plant looking good filling in really nicely um, so i'm very happy with how this plant has rebounded um, that's just some uh, looks like some powder uh, some mycorrhiza from burying vines got on the leaf nothing big there no powdery mildew way too early for that all right let's go over to second ones here um this is the uh 1552 young as you can see um this is the u-turn plant so if you see the stump there Nice big healthy stump. Um, starts there, goes around, shoots right up, heading towards that fence. So uh, we got it. the first one pollinated a couple days ago here, probably four, four days ago. And then second one right there. So hopefully this first one takes and we can just call it good, but we'll have a backup just in case. Um, and that's uh, one thing you'll notice, um, all these little cobra heads sticking up. Let's get a better, better shot of that here. Before, everything was kind of laying down. And see if I can get a good picture of this here. They're all, they've all pretty much popped back up. Um, I started doing some nitrogen feeding along with some other stuff. So everything's kind of popping back up. Well, this is a good picture right here. So last week, these were pretty much laying flat on the, on the ground. And as you can see, dosed with some nitrogen some silica a few other goodies and it popped them right back up they're exactly where they want to be i do not want them any higher than that in fact maybe it's even too high but you know enough to show me that these things are have some energy in them and they're ready to push and and push hard um, all right anyways this is the 2365 um another beautiful plant really full as you can see it's the the ends are getting right to their uh, point where i need to uh, trim them terminate them and then as you terminate as you terminate these sides that energy that power just gets pushed forward stronger and stronger so every time you're terminating you're pushing that energy forward to the plant and that does two things one is it starts to set up that sink for your pumpkin and two is it helps fill out the front of this plant so termination don't be scared to do it even a little earlier when you start terminating those first ones it is um it's going to send that energy that power to the front of the plant um remember 15 feet out over here those leaves, those last few leaves, are doing very little to support and feed the pumpkin. You want that energy up around the pumpkin here. Um, think of it as a bullseye. The majority of your energy is going to come within that 10 to 15 feet around that pumpkin. So don't be scared to clip them even if they're not at their full 15 feet. Just cut them. What that does is it starts to send that energy forward in the plant. And this plant is looking... Just really nice, beautiful 2365. Um, this one is about, I wanna say eight or nine days old. Um, well, next week when I hopefully feel like I have all my keepers, we'll, we'll uh, pull towels off and look at them a little bit. Um, I do have a, there's the backup. And what the heck, I'm gonna probably do that one as a backup just because I like redundancy. And the more you can back up, the better. All right, let's check out the last two. All right, the 2405 Gunstrom. This plant's really coming on strong. Remember, this was the smallest plant due to no, no hoop house, no heating cables out, outside in the elements. 
Um, it's really, really popped up. As you can see, secondary is all shooting out on both sides. Um, this one is really coming along well. I got the first pumpkin right in there, um, pollinated probably seven, eight days ago now. We have backup right there and gonna do one more, um, but hoping that this front one is the one I go with. I'll know within the next week here. Um, but really nice, this plant's coming on really strong, very happy with it. Um, and let's check out the, uh, the 2069 Stelts. This plant is also doing very, very well. The, the, uh, this, this one's getting to about the point where I'm gonna chop it on both sides. So we're gonna chop them. Remember the little hole we had? Actually, we had them on all of them. Um, this is finally filling back in. It will be filled in probably within a week here. This one I chopped. It just wasn't doing anything. There's the tertiaries that, I don't know if you, let's see. Tertiary, tertiary, tertiary. Going in to fill this area in. I do it from this side, like I just said, because it's closer to the pumpkin. I want the energy all focused to the front. Not gonna use that one to go this way. It just makes no sense. You know, what energy is happening out here takes a long time. It will eventually get there, but it just takes a lot more energy to bring that energy there. Uh, maybe think of it like, you know, a windmill. If it's producing energy and you're only sending it 10 miles, you got a lot more energy. If you're sending it a thousand miles, a lot less energy. Um, but anyways, back to the plant, beautiful plant. Um, really really aggressive it's actually almost it's getting towards the end of that fence i'm kind of curving it a little because as you can see there's our keeper um it's actually the only one pollinated on this plant right now there's another little one up here i will pollinate it just in case um right right there but that is going to be the keeper until we, uh, and hopefully it will be the keeper. We, we won't have to uh, do anything else or, or get another one. But anyways, um, I did finally find my first squash vine borer yesterday. Um, I have has, had uh, cucumber beetles and squash bugs now a couple days in fact now that i'm looking at this plant you guys see this evil pair of twins right there uh we'll have to I'll have to make sure those things are just laying there dead and not act actually active um i did drench into the roots a little bit of um uh, I think I used this time I used the tree the um, tree and shrub formula um, so there's the systemic protection in there um, but again I watered it into the roots because the less spraying you can do you don't hit the non-target bugs but that is the 2069 stelts uh, so all the pumpkins overall looked really well um we're going to uh jump over to the tomatoes all right tomato alley we got a bunch of plants they're getting good size uh we're gonna go through they almost all have megas forming or megas already out this one's the first one that's out now to be honest with you this plant is is much too small i believe to support a good size mega so um I'm hoping it takes, but part of me is hoping it doesn't. Um, just because I gotta beef that plant up a little more. Um, some of these other ones are doing very well. In fact, one of the best ones I have is the 906 Brown off my seed. Nice mega there. Let's see if we can get close up there. It's like a little sunflower um but really one of the one of the tips and tricks with tomatoes and and i'm gonna do a tomato video here i have one in production but um one of the things you look for is 
Uh, let's see if I can get a good, good picture of this. That stem right there. You want a nice thick, almost a ribbon stem. Looks like there's multiple veins. That's one key to growing the giant tomatoes. Um, if you can get a stem that's that big and that thick, that is absolute key. Uh, we go over to the Tobec here, the uh, 719. This one almost has a mega on almost every single top. So there's a few different ways to trim these. And again, my tomato video, we're going to go through this. But one of the ways I do it is I will allow multiple tops to go up in hopes of a mega on one of them. Once I identify a mega, get it pollinated, then I do the trimming. But more on the tomatoes later. Um, we're just kind of showing them off today. Uh, another really nice mega there. So these plants are looking good. They're getting big. Um, this will be this will be a fun next couple months with these tomatoes because I think we'll get some absolute monsters. Uh, giant cantaloupe. Uh, I think this is the Prochaska 59. Um, this little one here. I'm gonna let this just kind of fill in this area right here. Uh, we do have the row of giant sunflowers. They are getting big, getting tall. Well, not that tall, a foot, but they're, they're growing. That's what we want. And then um, I think from last time I had the bushel gourds. Let's, let's head back to the bushel gourds here. They're starting to lay down and run, which is what we want to see. The weather's finally, you know, awful hot. As you can see, it's starting to pop out this way. We got 90s today and tomorrow. That's popping out that way. Um, so we got the 345 Gunstrom, the 470 Conley. And then we got in here, we have the 268 um, Field Pumpkins. They're just babies. But they'll, uh, in, in maybe the next video, they'll be big enough that I can pull those off and we can show you. Um, but the, the world record Field Pumpkins there. We have the world record marrow there, the 256 Sojin. And then we have the 103 Jarsh, um, which is the second largest butternut squash ever growing. So we got some monsters in the patch to fill in. Really this entire area is gonna be filled in with those um, smaller giants. And then, I do have a I do have a second patch with some stuff. Let's go peek at it, see what's going on over there. All right, before we get back to the last patch here, uh, I just want to show you. I got some bigger onions going, and some carrots. Biggest carrot. It's a pretty good size one, huh? So hopefully that turns into something. But uh, let's make our way to the back patch here. All right, the back patch here, the biggest thing I got, or I got a few things, but here's uh, the Blue Moon. I'm growing that for a genetic project for the crossing with the 1109 squash. This one is a Blue Moon crossed with a um, giant green squash. Um, I believe it came, the seed came from a 607, well, I'm not sure exactly how big it was, but it was a cross, so this is a first generation that we're going to mix with a, an 1109. Uh, next one we got here, the 1454 and a half angle. Um, hopefully a nice, beautiful orange pumpkin. Um, starting to droop a little. It's already, it's like 10 a.m. and it's already 85 degrees. So we'll have to get these guys all watered here soon. Um, but this one is going to be my 150 square foot patch. So obviously I got to do the lines still. Um, before it gets much bigger, but that will be my 150 um, patch pumpkin, the 1454.5 angle. And then, yes, I don't have a trellis up yet, so hopefully next video you see a nice big trellis, but these are my long gourds. Uh, the first long gourd is the 131 Tobec growing very, very aggressively considering how short ago I planted this um, plant. 
Um, but doing very well. Um, it really wants to start running up, so I better build it a trellis. The next one is the world record seed, the 173.75 Eaton. Um, that one's doing very well as well. Um, looks like it's starting to run a little there. So if you can see right there, just starting to pop up. And then the last one here, let's get it out of its, uh, its little cage because it looks like it's getting big enough here. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. All right, this one is the 154.6 G Feller. And this one is the slowest of the group, but still doing really well. Um, you know, there's probably six to eight inches. Eh, maybe, maybe a foot on that toe back. That one's a big one. Um, but the trellis, hopefully, like I said, I'll do a video of, of building it for those that have never built a trellis. It's going to be a pretty simplistic one. I'm not going to be all fancy, just more um, what will hold up a bunch of long gourds. And then uh, over here in the shade, we have a, a marrow. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to try a marrow in part shade. So this gets shade all morning and then sun all afternoon. Uh, this is the 235 bags, uh, 235.9 to be exact. Um, I really want to do a crisscross with the world record marrow, which I have in the other patch and this one. So uh, this patch needs a little more work. I got to do another tilling. Um, the weeds are starting to get out of control here. Um, but that is about it for the patch tour for the summer solstice. So I thank you guys for following along with me on my journey this year. Um, go ahead and hit like if you like the video. Subscribe if you want to keep seeing these um, um, patch updates. And um, also the tutorial videos that I plan on doing. Uh, there'll be a lot of walkthroughs this year. We'll walk through, obviously, tomato is the one that should be coming out here in the next few days. And then after the tomato one, we're going to get into some of the gourds. And then um, uh, maybe a little bit on sunflowers and some of these other giants. We'll do some tutorial videos just so everybody has kind of a clue on how to go about um, growing these other giants that aren't just the pumpkins or the giant squash so again thank you so much uh grow them big guys